In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will see particles performing curvilinear motion and projectile motion. These motions are another part of kinematics of particles. Let us first understand curvilinear motion with the help of an example. Our solar system is the best example of curvilinear motion. Here, every planet is revolving around the sun. That is, they travel along a curved path performing curvilinear motion. In curvilinear motion, the position, velocity and acceleration are represented in vector form. The velocity vector is always tangential to the position of the point. The acceleration vector can be at any angle. In our previous example of the solar system, the planets keep on changing its position. So the position vector is extended from the origin, that is the sun, to the position of the planets. Therefore, we split the position of the planet into two independent rectilinear motions along x direction and y direction and its position and magnitude can be found out. With the help of position vector, we can also find its velocity and acceleration. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Now as velocity keeps on changing in curvilinear motion, it results in acceleration being present at that instant. In a curvilinear motion, the acceleration vector can be split along tangent to the path and normal to the path. Normal component of acceleration represents the change in direction of motion and directed towards the center of the curvature. Tangential component of acceleration represents the change in speed of the particle. In curvilinear curves are defined as a function and radius of curvature is given by the following formulae. In curvilinear motion, the path of the particle is expressed as a mathematical expression. Here are the different types of curves which particles are performing. Let's take an example of curvilinear motion. An airplane travels on a curved path. At point P, it has speed of 350 km per hour, which is increasing at a rate of 1 meter per second square. Determine the magnitude of the acceleration at point P an angle made by the acceleration vector with the positive x-axis. We have given speed of the airplane at point P. First, convert the given speed of the airplane in meter per second. Equation of the curve is given as y equals 0.3 x square. We have to find out the magnitude of total acceleration at point P. Taking double derivative of the given equation, find its position at x equals 5 kilometers. Now using the formulae for radius of curvature and substituting the values, we get the radius of the curved path. Once radius has been known, we can find normal acceleration. Tangential acceleration is given as 1 meter per second square. With the help of normal acceleration and tangential acceleration, we get the resultant acceleration. Now we have to find the inclination of resultant acceleration. Let theta be the angle made by the acceleration vector with the tangent at x equals 5. So the inclination angle theta can be found out. Now we have to find the inclination with respect to positive x axis. So tan alpha is given by the slope of the line and its inclination is found out. So the total inclination made by positive x axis is summation of theta plus alpha. Let us see another type of problem in curvilinear motion. In curvilinear motion, a particle is defined by Vx equals 25 minus 8t meters per second and y equals 48 minus 3t square meters. Knowing at t equals 0, x equals 0, find at time t equals 3 seconds, the position, velocity and acceleration vectors. Also find the corresponding magnitude. As a vector of a particle is to be found out, we need two direction components, that is x direction and y direction. Consider x direction. We have given velocity in x direction. Velocity in a direction is given by the partial derivative of distance upon time. Now integrating and taking lower limits as x equals 0 and t equals 0, we get equation 2. Also, acceleration in a direction is given by the partial derivative of velocity upon time. On evaluating, we get equation 3. 
consider y direction. We have given position in y direction. On differentiating, we get velocity in y direction. Again, differentiating, we get acceleration in y direction. To find position, velocity and acceleration at t equals 3 seconds. Substituting t equals 3 seconds in equation 2 and 4, we get position in x and y direction. Therefore, position vector is r bar equals 39i plus 21j. On evaluating, we get position of the particle as 44.29 meters. Similarly, on substituting t equals 3 seconds in equation 1 and 5, we get velocity of the particle as 18.02 meters per second. And substituting t equals 3 seconds in equation 3 and 6, we get acceleration of the particle as 10 meters per second square. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Projectile motion is also a curvilinear motion. Let us understand by an example. A man playing darts has to hit the target at the center. To do that, he has to throw the dart in a direction that follows curved path and hits the target. This curved motion is also known as projectile motion. The path traced by a projectile is called trajectory and the angle at which a projectile is thrown into space is called the angle of projection. Minimum distance between the point of projection and the point where the projectile strikes is called the range. Equation of the path of a projectile is given by the following equation where x and y are the coordinates. Theta Let us consider the given problem and analyze it. From the top of a building 20 meter high, a ball is projected at 20 meter per second at an angle of 50 degree upwards to the horizontal. At what distance it would hit the ground from the foot of the building? What is the maximum height attained above the ground? The velocity of the ball just as it hits the ground and the total time of flight. Let x is the distance from the foot of the building. Let the ball reach a height y meter above the building. Consider the vertical motion from P to Q and write all the initial conditions. Using equation for uniform acceleration and substituting the values, we get the maximum height attained by the ball. Now consider the motion from P to C. Consider a vertical motion and write all the initial conditions. On substituting the values in equation for uniform acceleration, we get time taken by the ball to reach at point C and the vertical velocity component at point C. Similarly, evaluating for horizontal motion, we get distance traveled by the ball. Now analyze point C. On substituting respective values, we get resultant velocity at point C. Let us now analyze projectile motion on an inclined plane. A ball at A is kicked such that theta equals 30 degree. The point B where it strikes the ground has coordinates 5 and minus 3. Determine the speed at which it is kicked at the velocity at which it strikes the ground. Coordinates at point B are given. Hence using equation of the path of a projectile, here theta equals 30 degree, g equals 9.81 meters per second square, x equals 5 meters and y equals minus 3 meters. On substituting the values in the equation of the path of a projectile, we get initial speed at which it is kicked. Horizontal component of velocity remains constant, that is vx equals ux. For vertical component, using v square equals u square plus 2 as. On substituting the values, we get the vertical component. On further evaluating, we get the velocity with which it strikes the ground. Let's take a quick review of what we've learned in this lecture. We have seen curvilinear motion by taking an example of our solar system, where planet Earth is revolving around the Sun, performing a curvilinear motion. So if a particle travels on a curved path, then the particle is said to have a curvilinear motion. The position, velocity, and acceleration of the planet is defined in vector form. In rectangular system, the position of a particle is split into two independent rectilinear motions along x-direction and y-direction. 
using appropriate equation, we can find position and magnitude of the given particle. As the particle moves along the curved path, that means acceleration is present at that instant at any angle. So we resolve the acceleration in tangential direction and normal direction and find the resultant acceleration acting at an angle. For projectile motion, we have taken an example of a man playing darts in which motion of the dart is called a projectile motion. Path traced by the dart is called a trajectory. Angle at which the dart is thrown is called an angle of projection and the minimum distance traveled by the dart is called range. Also, we have seen the equation of the path of the projectile motion. So this is the overview of our video lecture.